taxi wait. New Year's Eve is the worst possible time to set a resolution. Across the whole year, picking a single point in time as the moment to start making a positive change, to put some effort into improving yourself and get better and build positive habits, New Year's Eve is the worst time of the year to do that. It's a week after Christmas, you've probably still got Christmas pudding in the fridge that you're going to tuck into, pour a bit of custard over, grab a beer, sit down. There goes half your resolutions already. It's not going to work. You're surrounded by junk food, you're having good festive celebrations with your friends, you're going out for parties. It's the day after New Year's Eve, which is normally a late night and drinking and binging and eating or whatever the hell you do, partying hard, you may be even making some bad decisions on New Year's Eve, leading into a pretty morose New Year's Day where you just don't have the motivation to continue on those lofty goals you set last night that sounded great at 11.59. New Year's Eve is the worst time in the world to set resolutions. But then I think setting resolutions is not even that good. So I'm going to tell you how I set my goals, how I make improvements in life, and how I've used this system to do things like giving up alcohol for good, exercising five to six times a day, <sighs> five to six times a day, that's a little intense, five to six times a week, writing a novel and a screenplay, doing YouTube channels, posting and all those things, all the creative outlets, all of that stuff I've built into my life as positive habits through this system. And that's what I'm gonna talk about. I think a lot of people get caught up in the hubbub of the fun of New Year's Eve and then setting resolutions and the symbolic nature of the first day of the year. So why not make big grandiose statements that you'll never live up to? So there's part of the problem there is that it's just another day. Waiting for the first day of the year, the first day of the week, the first day of the month, whatever reason, waiting to start something on a Monday, or that's all bullshit. If you need to start on the first of something, then you're not really going to follow through on what you're trying to do. Now I say that now, I've recently given up alcohol for coming up to a year and I did it on my 35th birthday, but that was more for an easy way for me to count. But New Year's resolutions aren't all bad and in fact if you're setting New Year's resolutions then at least you are trying to get better. Because but of course the single best resolution that you can do is to resolve to smash the like button. No, those, those just don't feel right, do they? They just feel so bad. If you're not trying to improve, if you use that as an excuse to not even bother to try to change, then you're getting, you're stagnating, you're boring, and you're gonna be left behind. So here's what I do. I do a couple of things. I set long-term, you call them goals, themes, both, whatever you wanna call them, but I try to paint a picture of the things I want for the next year coming forward. And the idea is I have big, ambitious things that I don't have to be fully defined, but that I know I want to work towards and potentially achieve. So I'll set things like I want to finish writing a novel, I want to launch a product, I want to do any number of those things. I want to not get bitten by ants on my foot. Ah. So I set those big themes. I also might set things about, you know, better parenting or better things like that. At that level, they're not necessarily easily measured, at least at this point in time. They're areas I know I want to improve. I might not have come up with a specific metric for how I want to do that, but I know that's areas that I want to focus on. So that's the first thing. And you need to know, and that's the good way to start because you want to look at the areas you want to change in your life because you can't change everything at once. But if you know these are the top two, three, four areas that I want to really improve on, then, then that'll help you focus. And you don't need to know everything you'll do in that time. Like you might say, I want to get healthier. And then is getting healthier eating better? But then if you crush that, if you start eating better and you, you really get that habit down pat by March, maybe another part of that goal is starting to work out more, go for runs or do other things. So you don't need to be held down to the first goal that you set on January 1st. You set more of a theme, the broader picture that you're gonna focus on. Then I flip from that sort of high level view to the real low level micro focus, whereas I track daily habits. I have a spreadsheet and every single habit I want to improve, so it's either something I want to add to my life or something I want to remove from my life as a habit, I track 
whether I did or didn't do it for that day. And my spreadsheet, you know, it goes green if I did it, goes red if I don't, and I sort of track how many I get in a row, I track how many I get for a day. I also even track my mood, happiness level in the morning and in the afternoon and I correlate that to go well look these days where I was really feeling down the dumps funnily enough correlates to the days where I was shit with my habits I ate bad food I didn't exercise or whatever I wonder why that is so I track all that and that helps motivate me on a daily basis and helps keep me accountable when I say okay my overarching goal my overarching theme was to be fitter or healthier and I've decided I'm gonna cut out sugar then I go, okay, no sugar is one of my habits and I track it on a daily basis, did I do it? And all I do then is try to get better. And now that sounds a lot like the traditional New Year's Eve resolutions, but the reason I do it that way is because I just wanna count overall and ensure that I'm getting better at it. If I set a goal of no more sugar for the year, if I set that as a New Year resolution and by January 3rd of smashing down Mars bars, I give up. Two days, great, and then I've blown it out once, so I give up because I broke the resolution. But if I just go, no, okay, I had two days, I broke it, let's go get three days in a row. Let's go to get four days, and I just keep working hard at it. So over the course of the year, I might hit 250, 300 days of no sugar. That is infinitely better than having a strict rule of I've got to do the whole year, getting to two, failing, and then just giving up. So tracking on a daily basis and just trying to get better, use that to count my scores, beat my personal best and keep pushing myself on a daily level for each specific goal. That's really motivating. And, and it means you, give, you, can, you can have a break. Like sometimes you can go a month and do really well and then you can have a little bit of a blowout and you, you know what, that's okay. Get back on, dive back in, let's go again. Other things I do, I actually do something a bit fun. I think I got this from Chris Sucker on a Tim Ferriss podcast many years ago, but he writes letters to himself on New Year's Eve to read in the following New Year's Eve. So I do that, and I would like this for many reasons, but the main reason is for seeing how wrong it is. So I write something to myself um, around the end of December so I can open it up in the following year. And I write kind of like a summary of what I did for the year, which is always a good reminder. But I also then look forward and go, here's where you're going to be in a year's time. And it's funny how wrong that is. Some things that I thought were going to be big were not even a factor. Some things I didn't even know existed came up. And that's just the way life is. And having that reminder that what you predicted a year ago is really far off in some cases. That gives me that kind of motivation to go, that's right, I don't have to be perfect, I don't have to get everything right. But as long as I'm trying hard to improve, as long as I'm giving it my best crack and getting better every day, as long as I can look back and go, I am better, I am a better person, I am a fitter person, I am a healthier person, I am a happier person, I'm working better at my projects, I'm putting better effort into being a parent and being a husband and being a friend and all those things. If I can look at myself and go, I'm better, then I'm happy. So that's what I, I don't do news resolutions and I encourage people not to, but don't do nothing, do something. If you wanna buy into that, this is the first day of the year, this is time to make a change, then do it. But make a change that's gonna stick. Start working on your goals, your big themes that you wanna focus on and then track the specific habits on a daily basis. Don't You don't have to be perfect, you don't aim for 365 days a year for all of them, but just track those habits and keep getting better at them, don't. And that's all you gotta do. By the end of the year, you'll see that improvement. You will notice how well you have gone. That is it for this video on resolutions and goals and all those happy, fun, positive things. If you like it, please give me a thumbs up and let me know if this is the kind of content you want. Recently, I've had my alcohol, my no alcohol video started getting a lot of views and I thought, okay, maybe I'm onto something. Maybe this is what people want. So if it is, a thumbs up will always go well. Sharing it with your friends and family if you think it's relevant for them and comment because that's the way. You can literally send me a, some, a message if you like it or if you don't like it and I'll read it and I will get better. Otherwise, that's it. Good luck, have fun.